forever and everything that is said and done will give you the glory, the honor, and praise that you so deserve. We thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You can be seated at this time. The children can be dismissed. Thank God for the Word of God. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for all that He's done, all that He's doing. We're not going back there tonight. Maybe Sunday, but we, we began ministering this past Sunday on the sacrifice of praise in God's people and, and those that are in faith. The language of the believer, the language of those that are in faith and trust in God. What is it? It's praise, right? We're giving God the thanksgiving, glory, and honor He so deserves for the Lord is good. Yeah. And His mercy endures forever. The Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. Go to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. To begin with here, the Lord instructed me. And I do have some things to say by the Spirit of God that He just told me a while ago, but I think it will be in a few minutes here and we're going to let Him move. We begin last Wednesday night, and I'm not even sure how long we're going. Only thing, we have a, a plan around here. We, we say we make plans, and that's perfectly fine, I guess. We have an order of service, but the, the reality of it is, the reason we don't have all the messages and everything out on the sign is because it's always subject to change, right? Because those that are led by the Spirit of God, they're the sons of God, they're the children of God, and we want to be led and guided by Him, right? Into the truth of God's Word. And, and we'll know this truth, and the truth shall set us free. But last week, we started a message, and we're going to minister along those lines this week. Uh, the title is, Faith That Works. Faith That Works, right? Now, we have been, and, and there's other things going on, but we have been living in a great time, a time of great chaos, I would say, and despair. Uh, many are in fear and, and have no idea concerning what they are to do. And, and sadly, even many Christians have no directions uh, in their lives. And, and many, as you have seen, these are statements of facts, not statements of attack. You should be able to speak the truth and love in church, right? Yeah. Uh, many, even Christians, have been in church all their life. Heard the word maybe repeatedly, or maybe not, I don't know, up there. But then face problems in opposition and come to a place where they have no idea what to do. And some are in those situations today. It may be coronavirus related. It may be nothing to do with the coronavirus. You may, I know there's people here that need this message. It has nothing to do with the virus that's been going around. Everybody faces opposition, right? All that live godly in Christ will suffer persecution. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of how many? Oh. Right? The Bible says don't think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is the trial. You're going to be tested. You're going to be opposed. You'll even have solicitation of to sin, temptation from the enemy. But you don't have to miss it. You don't have to go the wrong way. You can trust God in the storm. Right? Yeah. There should never, and I mean never, be a time in the life of a Christian where you give up and say, I don't know what to do because you have and know the answer. Yeah. Right? I don't know what to do. Remember, we taught you a few weeks ago out of James 4, 7, submit yourselves unto God. Resist the devil and he'll flee. That word resist means to oppose or stand against. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then we taught you. You say, well, I've been facing opposition. Well, Ephesians 4, 27 says, neither give place to the devil. You cause him some problems in Jesus' name. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You're to provide opposition for him. So the enemy, we said a few weeks ago, gains access into the believer's life when he or she, the believer, stands down instead of stands up. It's a time for the body of Christ to rise up. Amen. No, not to attack people. Not against people, but against the work of the enemy in the earth. It is our time to shine. Right? Amen. It's an opportunity for you and me to shine brighter than ever before. We should not blend in as Christians. The body of Christ... Believers individually in the church of the whole should not be making decisions and following the same pattern that the world is because in Romans 12, 2, we know we're not to be conformed to the world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, right? With the Word of God so we can accomplish the perfect will, plan, and purpose of God. And that word in the Greek in part for conform, what does it mean? It means to follow the same pattern of it. The church should not look like or act like the world. Satan is the God of this world, right? But he's not our God. We live in this world, but we're not of this world. Our God is Heavenly Father. Jesus being our Lord and Savior and the only ministry agent at work today in the earth is the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Ghost. So, and we looked at some of this last week, but we're going to talk about how to walk and live by faith, 
But I want you to plainly see, and we started this last week because the, the Holy Spirit reminded me or told me, He said there are people in your congregation, in their lives, and things, some of them have just come about, these things have come about recently. But some things you've dealt with forever, seemingly anyways, and you've come to a point that you just about give up on it. And our main point that we're going to be driving in is with God, nothing is impossible. Amen. The devil wants to convince you that in the situations and circumstances, the times and seasons that you're living in, that there's just no way that what God has said in His Word or specifically His Spirit to your spirit about your life, there's just no way it can come to pass. The reason the enemy works on you that way is for this reason and this reason only. If he could kill you at will, you'd already be dead. Yeah. If he could defeat you whenever he felt like it, you would have been defeated a long time ago. You wouldn't even be sitting there. Yeah. He has to have your cooperation. So he works on you by bringing thoughts that are contradictory of the Word of God and very often good arguments you might would think, right? That's why we're focusing on seeing ourselves in Christ Jesus and not who we are in ourselves. If you look at yourself, you'll not feel like you've got the greatest ability in the world to overcome things in your life. Because nobody other than God knows you as good as you do, Amen. right? But our faith is not in me. Our faith is not in self. Not self-righteous, righteous in and through Christ Jesus. We're going to look at that in a minute in Galatians chapter 2. Because as the Lord said, no, just really drive this in. But nothing is impossible with God. But the enemy comes along and tries to get you to release the Word of God. Why? Because the Word of God has within it the ability to accomplish everything God has promised. And Satan knows if you hold fast. Go to Mark chapter 4 while you hold your place. We quote some of them. Some of you just need to see it. Right? What's Satan after? Word. Yeah. Mark chapter 4. <clears throat> Just for the sake of time, go down to verse 14. Mark 4, 14. The sower soweth the word. The word is the seed, right? Yeah. And these are they by the wayside. Where the word is sown. But when they have heard. You heard from in church. It's got to be the Bible or it don't work for you. But you heard in church, if you come here, we preach the word. Thanks be unto God who gives us the victory. Yes. Stay, you, you, you've been, you can stay steadfast, unmovable, always found abounding in the work of the Lord. Knowing your labor is not in vain, you're complete in Him. My God shall supply. Amen? Yes. The one that's a heaven opened up, we just took the tithes and offerings up. Yes. Satan's under my feet. Yes. Amen? I'm seated together. I'm an heir and a joint heir with Christ Jesus. We're seated together in heavenly places with Him, right? Yes. Many, many things. We go and quote for sake of time. But when you hear these things and you receive them, this is the Word that has within it the ability to alter and change the course of your life forever. And then, of course, it will help you to be a witness to others during these times and seasons we're living in. Verse 15, again, these are they by the wayside where the Word is sown, but when they have heard, what's Satan do? You know, I always tell you, if you're not careful, Satan will meet you out in the parking lot to steal the word that was sown, but a lot of times he'll even wait until you get outside. That's right. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. He'll even wait until you get outside. You have no good of nothing, going to accomplish nothing, nowhere, before you get outside and you've got a thousand reasons why you're not going to make it, but we just got one while you are. Amen. His name is Jesus. Yes. Yes. Just Jesus. i got a message on that. Amen. Just Jesus. You say, well, i got all this other stuff. Just throw it in the trash can. It's not worth anything anyway. Our faith and trust is not in you in that sense. You say you believe in people, yeah, but not in the faith that we're supposed to have in God and God alone. People sometimes will disappoint you. God will never disappoint you. God will never fail you. God will never leave you nor forsake you. God said, I'm the Lord, I change not. What God has said today, I don't care if it looks bleaker than it's ever looked before in your life. That word is still true. Don't you let the devil come and don't you turn loose of it because that's what he's doing. The devil comes immediately. Jesus said, not Jason. Jesus said right here, when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and his goal is this. You don't have to let him to take away the word that was sown in their hearts. You get a word tonight to give you a revelation that it doesn't matter what you've been facing, how bad it looks. There's there's no way whatsoever God has put something inside of me and he's put something inside of you that's bigger than you and the devil and maybe many people that supposedly love you or try to talk you out of what God has said and you've got every reason in the world just why you should just let it go and just keep being mundane and doing what you've been doing and toe the line but the only line we're here to toe 
is the instruction of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're here to accomplish not my will, Jesus said, but His will. And it doesn't matter what anybody says. Don't you let go of what God has said in His Word. Don't you let go of what the Holy Ghost has told you. Don't you let go because it's bigger than you. It's not bigger than God. And you say, you've been saying that a lot because it's what the Holy Ghost is saying. He's talking to His people today. He's talking to His church today. And He said the church is built upon the rock of the Word of God. The church is built upon the rock of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's in Matthew 16. But we know in Matthew 7, 24 through 27, we know the storm is coming to everybody. But the church, the people, that's built upon the rock of the Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter how strong the wind is. It doesn't matter how high the waves are. It doesn't matter what's going on the outside. When everything passes by, you're still going to be standing because it's built upon the rock. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. With God, don't say for one minute there's no way. Yes, there is. The devil comes along and he says, why you? Why you? You need to say, why not me? I'm a child of God. Do you know who my daddy is? Do you know who my father is? Amen. You got all of heaven backing you. We got to get a renewed focus and a renewed vision. It's so because God said so and he's looking for some people. That's why you're here is because you're crazy anyways. He's looking for some people right now that's crazy enough to believe that God will do what God said he would do. That will believe that God said who God says he is to believe today that I'm saved. I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm everything that God has made me in and through Christ Jesus. Today I can go boldly to the throne of grace because I have been made righteous in him. Yes, God created man to have dominion and overcome everything in this earth. Man messed it up, but thank God. God loved us so much that he gave Jesus and he came and made it right. He put the devil for you and me and we're supposed to be enforcing his defeat. I go out in public and I get mad as, oh my God. I told Arlie, I come back yesterday and I, I come back to the house and I was living. I was living because you can see what the devil's doing. Oh, you can see the way he's moving. You can see the darkness. He's a, oh, he's a liar. Oh, he's a liar. You say, are you mad at somebody? I'm not mad at nobody, but I ought to put a mask on the devil to smother him tonight. In the name of Jesus, it's telling you some foolishness. You say, are you knocking people? No, it's the way the enemy is operating to bring and produce fear in the life of even God's people. Amen? And we're not kidding. You say, well, who do you think you are? We don't think we're nobody. We know the people that know their God, that know their God shall do great exploits. Amen? You just got to know who He is, not who you are. Galatians 2, let's read it. Oh, God is with us. I thought we were just going to teach tonight. We might do a little bit of all of it. He is with us. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, <clears throat> says this, one of the scriptures that I live by and I pray that you live by. I am crucified with Christ. Yes. We tell you regularly about plans and purposes and such things. Psalms 127, 1 says, unless the Lord builds a, build a house, they labor in vain. You can labor, you can toil, you can do what others think you should do, all of these sorts of things. No, you can even do what you think you should do and just really be tired. You can labor and get something built even, but the Bible says unless the Lord builds the house, <coughs> they labor in vain to build it. Right? Just because somebody gets something built doesn't mean it's of God. Because if God instructed it, then it's of God. But we talked about the crucified man, which is very important for you to trust God. The crucified man, we have pointed this out repeatedly, if you're going to be crucified this evening, what kind of plans do you have for tomorrow? That's good revelation, I'm telling you. I read that by E.W. Tozer in The Crucified Life years ago. And he said, the crucified man, he's got no plans tomorrow. You're crucified this evening at 8. You don't have no plans where you're going to eat tomorrow. Who you going to mess with, talk to, nothing. You don't have no plans. They won't see you up there at the bank. Not in your own will and volition. You, don't, you know, why? Because it's dead. He said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. In the natural, that makes no sense. But we're not in the natural. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. How do I now live? But, but Christ liveth in me. The life which I now live. So I'm crucified, but I'm more alive than ever before. The life which I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith or by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So I'm still living, right? But I've completely come to an end of myself. And that is what God is endeavoring to get us to do. Some of us have not been able to move forward because our focus is wrong. You remember the focus of your faith 
is the Word of God and God Himself. Right? We taught you that a while back as well. The life which I now live, I live by faith in God. Now, we talk, I'm not going back because I don't have time. But we talked about Thomas. You remember doubting Thomas, his faith. He said, I'll believe it when I see it. Right? And, and we know Jesus did not condone that. He, he corrected him. He said the one that is blessed is the one that believes and doesn't see. Yeah. Right? And then we went and looked at Abraham. Abraham called those things that be not as though they were. Right? Not weak in faith, considered not his own body now dead. He was 100 and Sarah was 90. Right? Yeah. And, and we know that, that even God changed his name from Abram to Abraham because the word Abraham means what in the Hebrew? The father of many nations. What God tell it. You're going to be the father of many nations. We talked to you last week, maybe Sunday too. You've got to say what God says. The word confession in the Greek actually means to say the same thing as. Yes. That's part of the definition. Amen? You say, well, everything looks bad, but God is good. Amen. Looks like there's no way. He's made a way. Amen. Looks like we're going under, but he said I'm going over and not under. Amen. Head not the tail, above and not beneath, and under not above. Yes. Amen? He said he believe all that stuff to the very core of my being. Yes, and it's working. <clears throat> we might add. It always works. God never fails. Faith that is based on the senses will not bring biblical results. We talked about the God kind of faith, which is Abraham's faith. And then we talked about natural human faith, this, this based upon the senses, which was Thomas. The God kind of faith is based upon God himself and his word. But I also want to say this, because it's necessary. I don't know how much I said this last week. But we must understand that the God kind of faith is not just trusting God. But it's also not trusting in anything else. It's Him alone. Faith in God alone. Right? Yeah. Not depending on any and everybody else. God and Satan, the world and the Word, cannot be worked at the same time because they're entirely opposites. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Some of these things we got on last week was very, very good. And I say that because it was the Word, not just because I, I preached it. Deuteronomy chapter 30. You and I have to make the decision, or get to is the better word, to trust God in the storm. Trust God when it's hard, when it's easy, when it's good, or when it seems bad. What's going on around you should not determine the decisions you make and what takes place inside of you. Amen? Deuteronomy 30, verse 15. There are, unpopular as it may be, Conditions if we're going to go over and not under. Right. And I know this is the Old Testament, but we got new as well, so it's all right. See, Deuteronomy 30, verse 15. Deuteronomy 30, verse 15. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil, and that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, walk in His ways, keep His commandments and His statutes and His judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But if your heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, this is what the enemy endeavors to get us to do, turn our heart and our ears away from God because he convinces us if we allow him to that what God has promised he's not able to perform, which we know he is, right? He say, oh, there's no way. Oh, there's no way you can do that. Yes, there is. If God's called you to do it, you can trust him and he'll use you to do it. Yes. yes. Doesn't mean you remember Timothy. You remember how Timothy Timothy was. And Paul talking to Timothy said, not giving you a, God's not giving you a spirit of fear, right? But a power, love, and a sound mind. He's not giving you a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Fear is a spirit and it's not from God. How do you know? Because the Bible says so. That's why a lot of things you're seeing right now, people think are natural. They're spiritual. We've just not been attuned to spiritual things because the church as a whole has become too natural. We've got to get spiritual again, right? And we're no more spirit-minded than we are word-minded. You need the word and the spirit together to accomplish the will of God in this life. He said, 17, but if your heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shalt be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce you unto you this day, that you shall surely perish, and that you shall not prolong your days upon the land, whether, whither thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. So he set before us, he said, I said, but it's the children of Israel, but we are the true church today, all of us together in Christ anyways, that I have set before you life and death, set before you blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life 
that both thou and thy seed may live. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and thou mayest obey his voice, that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life, the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear, swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, to give them. But he set before them life and death, blessing and cursing, but who had to choose? They had to choose. Mark eleven twenty two. you don't have to go there, but he said, Jesus said, have faith in God. Have faith in God. And he said in Hebrews 11, verse 6, without faith, it is impossible to please him, right? <coughs> For he must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him, right? Without faith, it is impossible to please him. So if we're going to please God, what are we going to have to do or really get to do? We're going to have to have faith in him. We're going to have to trust him. We're going to have to take him at his word. And I got in my heart, uh, I would really like to move along to talk about how to appropriate the blessings of God. How to appropriate the promises of God, we should say, so you can walk in the blessings. And all of that is good, but we must stay here right now because the Lord said there's people in this place that know how to walk by faith, but in certain areas, because of what you faith, you haven't stepped out in faith. Matter of fact, this is what I was going to say when I started, but the Holy Ghost is telling me to do it now, so I am. As I was standing on the front row tonight, the Lord brought back to my memory uh, a, a message that I preached some time back, but it's for somebody here tonight. You know, a lot of times you think you can, you can think that you're waiting on God, and God's waiting on you. Man. I said a lot of times you can think you're waiting on God, and He's waiting on you. He said to me, brought back to, to my remembrance, and this is for somebody here. It's your move. It's not God's move. It's your move. He's put something... Or some things in your heart that's been there for some time. Didn't get them this morning. You didn't get them last week. Matter of fact, in this particular situation, it's been even more here. You've carried it around. Well, the seed is good, but it must be planted to produce fruit. Must be acted upon, right? Faith is confession, but it's also surrender. And then it's also a life. It is action. Faith is an action word. But you've got something in your heart that it's time to act on. It's your move. You must step out and make the decision that God has instructed you to. Now, I know, and me and Miss Laura Lee know, and I've said this before, but when we were down at TAP there in Bono, ministering and pastoring for several years, and the Lord began to deal with us about starting this church in particular. We were happy. We were satisfied. Everything was good. We didn't get ousted and all such things. And, and anybody that was there would, would, could, uh, would say the same thing that I'm telling you. But the entire time, even though we were there those last couple years, I'd say two years, the entire time there was an unsettling. Even people would say, you know, we're glad you're here. We love you, Pastor, and all this kind of stuff. The messages were great. And I remember driving off from the church, and our me and Laura Lee on Long Acre Drive there, going to the church out on Sunday morning. And I said, you know, everybody is glad that I'm here except for me. Now, that has nothing to do with the people. I love everybody there then, and I do now. Nothing to do with the people. You've got to trust God with your life. You've got to know Heavenly Father knows best. Whatever it is He's placed in your heart, no matter how it affects you or how it will seemingly affect other people, you've got to know it's going to work out in your favor because it's God's direction. Everything God does, even if it's hard for you to make those decisions, everything He instructs you to do, this has always helped me. Because if you know the Lord, He'll correct you too. But you can take correction from somebody that you know that loves you enough to give a son to die for him. When you know that he loves you, it's easy to take correction because I know everything God does, uh, not against me, but anytime he corrects me, I know it's for my good. But me and Ms. Laura it was like two years where we knew that we were supposed to start this church, but nothing came to pass and nothing came to fruition. And I could take you back to the forestry road one morning <clears throat> that I was riding on. I go to the get up early, go to the gym, and ride through the woods just a little bit, and then go home, get dressed, and go to the church and work, and then come back home that evening. But I would, uh, was right through the forest road one day, and the Lord began to deal with me. And he said, I've dealt with you for over two years now. He said, I've told you exactly what to do. He said, nothing's come to pass because you've not obeyed me. And he said, I've been merciful with you up to this point. He said, but now it's time to move, and it's going to cost you if you don't step out. You say, what did it cost you? Nothing. Because when God says that, you step out, and you obey. 
from that very day we begin to put things into motion. Now, there's somebody here tonight. This is not going to be easy for you to make this move and make this decision. Matter of fact, the Lord said even this night. You know, the Bible says, we quoted one, Psalm 127, 1, but verse 2, I believe, part of it says, He gives His beloved sleep. Even tonight, you're going to have a hard time sleeping. Not that it's God's will, and not that you be staying up because you've got a headache or stomach ache or nothing else, but the Lord's going to be dealing with you. Because after the service tonight, you can open your heart back up and begin to listen to and entertain some things that you kind of put on the back burner because the Lord's saying, put them back to the front burner because it's time. It's your move. It's time for you to put in motion and make the decision. You say, well, God, he's never going to make me do anything. Yeah, that's true. But we need to obey him when he talks because when he's, if we're willing and obedient, we'll lead to the good of the land. Amen? It's time to step out and move out and obey God. God's got a plan often that is in your heart all the time that's in your heart. It's in everybody's heart, but sometimes people don't know uh, initially. But he's got some things in your heart, but you may have to make changes and adjustments for it to come to pass. The Holy Ghost said, listen to him, obey him. But he said tonight, if you've got nothing else, you need to understand. It's your move. Amen. Don't say anymore. I'm not condemning you, but this is from God. Don't say anymore that I'm waiting on God. Because he said, I've told, you, I've told you what to do. I've placed it in your heart and told you what to do. Now it's your decision. So what do you do? Just follow him, right? Go to Luke chapter 1. I won't cost you nothing extra, but that was by the Holy Ghost. I hadn't thought about that until I was on the front row. But it's your move. And I believe you're going to obey the Lord and you'll see things come to pass, you know, that, that will amaze you and others. But you know God will get all the glory, honor, and credit. You remember the children of Israel, they never, they couldn't enter in wise. Because unbelief, right? Very often we have to be careful because we don't enter into God's best because unbelief. And a lot of Christians will throw Hail Marys and they say, well, whatever God's will is just going to automatically happen. That sounds real good if it was in the Bible. That's not in the Bible. That actually directly contradicts the word. You have a part to play with whether you accomplish God's will or not. And on the most basic level, we could just use you tonight. It's as basic as it gets. We could read from the Word, do not be forsaken assembling together with the saints, and maybe some of you in particular, God dealt with you about being here tonight, so you would know it was God's will. But did you have a part to play in you coming here? Yes. I mean, I'm not saying He wasn't with you, but I don't, I don't believe God drove you to church tonight. He didn't get off, off your couch, your chair, wherever he's at, leave work after a tired day and make the conscious decision. He may impress something upon your spirit. So you have God's side, but in order for God's will to come to pass, you have to cooperate. Amen. Just the fact that you're receiving this word, you had to cooperate and be here. But nothing, i got to say a few of these things tonight, but nothing is impossible with God. Luke 1, 37. Luke 1, 37. This was after our text scripture, halfway through the second service. More than halfway through. That's y'all's fault again. Y'all come expecting to receive and God moves mightily. Yes. But this is talking about, uh, obviously, the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the angel of the Lord foretelling the birth of Jesus by the Virgin Mary. And also talking about John the Baptist's birth by the Baron Elizabeth, who couldn't have children. And, and he said this. He's talking about Jesus is coming. You know, and he's, he's going to be the Savior and born of a virgin. Which is not naturally possible. And then if we read verse 36. Behold thy cousin Elizabeth. She's also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her. Who was called barren. She was barren. For with God. You need to know that. For with God nothing shall be impossible. For with God. Now the balance of it. We talked about the God kind of faith. There's people on both sides of the spectrum. People say well if you think you can you can. That's great. Not in the Bible but it's great. Sounds good. If you just set your mind to it, you can do it. That's great, but it's not in the Bible. There's more to it than that. There's certain things, especially what God's called you to do, you can't do it without Him. It's faith in Him that's going to see you through. It's not how smart you are and how wise you are. Right? Or me. That goes for all of us. Or me. This message is not just for you. It's for me as well. With God, but you need to note that in that passage, with God, nothing shall be impossible. With God, nothing shall be impossible. Hebrews 11. So whatever you're doing, Hebrews 11, verse 6. Whatever you do, you need to make sure God's in. You need to make sure your faith and trust is in God. Amen? God will put you over. When in the natural, or for the devil, you shouldn't be going under. I pray that some of you are stirred. Believe that some of you are stirred in your heart and in your spirit and some things you're about to give up on. Oh, you're going to get mad. Not at people, but at the devil. And exercise your authority and begin to speak the word of God. Because you'll get a revelation. 
that the devil's a liar and he's endeavored to convince you that it's impossible, but the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. Hebrews 11, verse 6, we read it while I quoted it anyways. Hebrews 11, verse 6, but I just got it marked a little different for your, you to see what God's saying. For with, but without faith, so we just saw, with God, nothing shall be impossible. With God, nothing shall be impossible. We see here in verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible. Yes. And we're not perverting the scripture, but I'm leaving that off to say something. With God, all things are possible, but there are things without faith in God that are impossible. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it is impossible to please him. He's a believe that he is. He's rewarded them that do that and seek him. Right? So with God, all things are possible, but there are things that without faith will be impossible for you. We said it earlier, Mark 11, 22, Jesus said, have faith in who? God. In God. Have faith in in God. So, what we do see from these passages is the Bible does not say nothing shall be impossible, as I just said, if you set your mind to it. It does not say nothing shall be impossible if you just work harder than everybody else. Now, you hear a lot of these things all the time, even Christians. And I know people mean well. But you need to be careful where your faith is. Amen? If you work harder than anyone else, it doesn't say nothing will be impossible if you just know the right people. If you have the help of your family and friends, it doesn't say nothing shall be impossible if you only believe in yourself. I'm just going to be straight with you. We hear this stuff all the time. Faith in yourself is a beautiful thing. Amen. And that's not just for you. That's for me. Faith in yourself is a beautiful thing. The less you look at yourself, the better off you'll be. And the more you look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Knowing the work He's begun inside of you, He's well able to bring the fruition and completion. I tell you all the time, the biggest trip up with that of looking at yourself and your own abilities. And I know every good thing in you is of God. I understand that. And there's a balance to it. But one of the biggest things that will trip you up looking at yourself and not looking at God is the problem with that is God always, not once in a while, not 99% of the time, 100% of the time, what God has called you to do, you can't do without it. It's always bigger than you. So you're always going to feel defeated and less than so long as your faith is in anything other than God. You get people around you, and I don't mean it in the wrong way, but you hear it all the time. You get people around you try to build you up and encourage you, and they're doing nothing but deflate you, and they don't even know it. Oh, you can do it. You can do it. Just set your mind to it. Just work harder. If you don't give up, you'll just make it. You know, there's an old saying that says, what don't kill you make you stronger. If you've lived a long amount of time, in any amount of time, you know that's not true. I have known people that have dealt with things their whole life and has not made them stronger. That is not true. Many things have just about crippled them in life. Now, anybody can be set free. Amen? In ministering and in pastoring. And, and this, will, this will go along with what I'm endeavoring to tell you. Endeavoring to teach you tonight. Is, is I would rather very often take somebody at the bottom of the pit with nothing else to hold on to. Almost everybody around them give up on them and deem them as a failure. I can help them better, very, very, better often than you can help church people. To go along those same lines. Dr. Hagen used to say, when they had the, the was the voice of healings was not Dr. Hagen, but, but, but at the same time, they'd have the healing meetings and, and they would minister to the sick, lay hands on the sick. He said, I, I say this to teach you. I don't say this to criticize or hurt anybody. He said, but all of us, we couldn't wait for all the Pentecostal people to get through the prayer line so we could get some results. He said, because the ones that were in church almost every week, he said, unknowingly or knowingly, they had a lot of self-righteousness and a lot of I deserve this and that because I'm faithful and I'm here and I got my star on the Sunday school board. That's not how you bless with God. Amen. You're not blessed in realizing who you are. It's who you're not without Him and who you are in Christ Jesus. Yes. That's why I would rather take somebody, this is a gentleman, this is a Peter. You know, Peter, my God, did he fail him? Failed Jesus. Yes, more than one time. But the last time when he cursed to, to prove that he's not a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you imagine betraying Jesus in that sense? But I would rather take somebody that has nothing left to depend on than somebody that's still got several things to hold on. 
I would rather deal with somebody, and this may upset people, but just about that has gone to the doctor, and the doctor has finally told them after years, I can't help you. Then come see me. Because as long as they got these things they're going to depend on, there's somebody they're not dependent on. Now others would say different, but it contradicts the word. I said it contradicts the word. You can't depend on every and anything and depend on God at the same time. All things are possible to him that believeth. Right? With God, nothing shall be impossible. You'll get a no and a no way very often in this world. Others may give up on you, but thank God we serve a God that is faithful even when we're faithless. We serve a God that never changes. Thank God tonight, mine and yours worth and value is not in ourselves. It's not in others' opinions of us. It's in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm going to be all right, and I've got to put my faith in Him. But as long as Jesus is still seated at the right hand of the Father tonight, and He's there. Amen. Ever living to make intercession for us every day. On my good day, God is good. On my bad day, God is good. My worth and value is in Him. And I go boldly every day to the throne to get all the grace, mercy, and help that I need. Why? Because of me? No. But because of Jesus. Many people have lives that are all up and down and all around, not a blue of nobody, but it's because of what they're focused on. Their worth and value is in their decisions and actions, and life will never change as long as that's what you base your worth and value on. And it's popular in the church today. Well, I'm just an old sinner. Well, just make sure you tell us clearly so we preach your funeral. We can tell everybody, don't go the way you went because you went to hell. That is not biblical. You were a sinner. You have been saved by grace. You are not a sinner anymore. You're called to be saints. Matter of fact, that word saints in the Greek is 40, I believe, or one. And it means holy as well. You're called to be a saint. Called to walk like Him and talk like Him to follow in His steps. You worry. Some people say, well, I'm, I'm just not worthy. And give testimonies in the church. Well, praise God together. <coughs> There's somebody spewing doubt and unbelief publicly in the church. And then others will say, when I say, well, who do you think you are? No, it's not who I am. I am not worth anything in and of myself. My worthiness is not in me. I am worthy because of the blood of Jesus. Yeah. You are worthy because of the blood of Jesus, what He did. Our eyes and our gaze and our focus and our faith has got to get back on Him. And I know that there are people here tonight that you have given up on some things, maybe not even intentionally. You might not have stood up and said, I'm giving up and quitting, but it's just been a battle and it's been a struggle and it's been a toll. Well, the Lord said you might have done it unknowingly, but you had your dependency. See, as long as you're in the area of reason, you're not in the area of faith. You're not in both. They're opposites. You trust, we, we quote it about every service. In Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, he said, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not beyond understanding. Right? And, and then all thy ways acknowledge him, indirect thy paths. We quote it, right? Because you don't do You're not trusting in the Lord and leaning to your own understanding or intellect at the same time. They're, they oppose each other. Very often, they're not the same thing. Right? <clears throat> so what all is impossible with God? Nothing. But without faith... It may be impossible. Nothing is impossible with God if you've got nothing else other than what the Holy Ghost said to somebody. It's your move. I want you to know tonight when you leave here, nothing is impossible with God and He's waiting on us to trust Him. And again, this is, it may have nothing to do with the virus or such things. Uh, I do not know. But at the same time, it works with everything. Matthew 17. Matthew 17. We barely got started again this week, but it's all right. God is with us. He knows what He's doing, why He's doing it, and all such things. We just trust Him. There's some things that you have to always deal with in this life, and the flesh is one of them. And, well, your three enemies are what? What's the, what's the three enemies of the belief? The world, the flesh, and the devil. Yes. The world, the flesh, and the devil. You have to enforce Satan's defeat. You just continue to renew your mind with the word and don't follow the, the plan of this world, the path of this world, the ways of this world. And then we know you uh, renew your mind with the word and you bring this flesh into subjection. What does that mean? You tell it to sit down and shut up. Don't listen to it. The flesh never wants to obey God. We got Matthew 17, verse 14 through 21. We see... 
when they when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son. He's a lunatic, sore vexed. Oftentimes he falleth into the fire, into the water. I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. So this boy has a demon, right? This is an evil spirit. Spirits are harassing this boy, and all of these things are taking place. We usually read over Mark chapter 9, but for sake of what we want to point out, I wanted to use this one. But then in verse 16, they said, I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Verse 17 says, Jesus answered and said, what did he call him? Why could they not cure him? It was not because they didn't have the authority or the power because he'd already given it to them. They did have the authority to cast out devils. Jesus gave it to them. That's what's happening in the life of the believer in the church today. And I've said this not to hurt or attack, but the reality of it is with everything that just took place in this earth, especially in this country, the church of the living God should have been in a place that it stood up in boldness and fire and authority and a measure like it never had before, but it wasn't ready. Matter of fact, this time that we've been in, good, bad, or ugly, I've said it since last year, and though I did not know coronavirus, although I knew some things were coming by the Spirit of God, He didn't give me that word. I'm not going to story to you. But the Lord said it's going to be a time of exposure. He said it's going to be a time of exposure. And it has been. It's been a big time of exposure of people's faith. Yes. Exposure of people's lack of faith. Right? Amen. Exposure of many, many things. As a matter of fact, I, I, I used to say, when you get in these times, you find out. It's where the road meets the road. You find out what you got. Amen. It's one thing to preach a message. It's another thing when the devil roars his head. Exactly. Find out if it works or not. Right. Now just be honest with you. We put it to the test and it works. Yes, it works. Yes. We've been here for how many years? And I'm boasting of the Lord like Paul said. I'm not boasting of me. We've been here since, what, 20? We started the yeah. 8, 9 years, whatever it is. Yeah, but still, we've been here for quite a few years. And it might sound absurd, but the best time we've had is the last three months. Since we've been here. I put my hand on the Bible. The best time we've had. God is with us. Yes, Amen. Amen. And I go around and sometimes you say, we just about feel, you know, guilty. No, it's for everybody. But it only works if you trust Him. It only works if you trust Him. Me, you, or anybody else is no better than another person. It's got nothing to do with that. But you're only going to see the will, plan, and purpose of God accomplished in your life, in your family, and in your ministry if you put your faith and trust in it. It doesn't happen automatically. We must trust God and see His will come to pass in our life. Are you facing anything tonight that is bigger than you? Maybe so. Are you facing anything tonight that is bigger than God? Absolutely not. No matter what it is. You can trust Him in the seemingly darkest and bleakest hour. And God will see you through. Amen. God is with us. Stand to your feet. Father, we love you and thank you today. We praise you today. You're so good, and your mercy endures forever. We have chosen to not be faithless, but to be faithful to you. We thank you that by the Word of God and the Holy Ghost that you have revealed, at least in part to our life, in our lives, maybe any and everything that we've trusted in that is not of you. We thank you, Father, by the Holy Ghost that you have revealed to us maybe these areas that we have been tempted by the enemy or situations and circumstances in this life to let go of because they've looked hopeless. Well, we've seen in your word that as long as we have faith in you, nothing is hopeless. All things are possible to him that believeth. I thank you, Father, not towards people, but in each and every person in this place, there's going to be a righteous indignation that rises up against the work of the enemy to put the devil.